Okay, if we think about it, um, metry means to measure. So something to do with mass. Spectro usually refers to something related to a spectrum. Oh, before I go any further, just there. Anyone who missed out on a printed copy of the uh, revision pack? In addition to that, there are extra. Sorry. Sorry. So the instrumentation is not important. So we can cross out that first learning intention because we don't need it. You don't need to know the details of the equipment. The whole unit of spectroscopy or spectrometry, right? Two slightly different but related things, right? Is that we don't need to know how the instrument works, right? It's actually one of the failings of modern science is that we're actually losing technicians because what's important is I would describe this unit as look at the graph and make sense of it. Yeah, that's the whole point of this unit, how we analyze and interpret spectrums or spectrographs. So look at the graph and make sense of it. That's what I call this unit. Explain the chemical and physical basis of max spectrometry and relate this to the nature of samples analyzed. Make qualitative interpretation. So all of this is qualitative. In fact, much of unit four is qualitative. Um, obviously our atom economy, percentage yield, right, that we looked at, that's the only quantitative component. Oh, and volumetric analysis obviously is quantitative. Spectroscopy, qualitative. Describe instrumental methods for analysis that combine a number of techniques. Obviously, we're only looking at one, mass spectroscopy today. We're going to look at IR, going to look at proton and carbon-13 NMR as well. Discuss factors to be considered when choosing an analytical or instrumental technique. Identify appropriate analytical technique for a range of samples. So the only analytical technique we have looked at so far is volumetric analysis. Yeah, useful for acids and bases, right? Useful for things like ethanol, uh, anything that will undergo an oxidation reaction. We can use volumetric analysis for that. We would use chromatography for other things. And we looked at chromatography last year. We use mass spec IR and NMR for the determination of the structure of a compound. Here we go, a mass spectrometer the instrument that is used in mass spectrometry looks a bit like this. We put in a sample, we bombard it with some electrons. Then we allow that sample to travel through a magnetic field. Then there's a detector at the end, right? It has to be a charged particle in order for the detector to pick up. Otherwise, we don't need to know, don't actually need to know this, but it's just useful. The bit that's useful to know is mass and something to do with charge. Dichloromethane. Can you draw me that structure? Said previously, we've used mass spec to look at isotopes. And if I had just chlorine atoms and put chlorine atoms through a mass spectrum, we would see a peak about, um, say, 30 units high at chlorine 37, and we'd see another peak about 70 units high, right? Or the uh, percentage abundance about 70% high of chlorine 35, right? In year 12, what happens is that I've got a molecule and it breaks into fragments when I bombard it with electrons. So I want to consider, by looking at this, I want to consider how many different ways can I break that apart? And really, although you can see there's lots of tiny, small fragments here that we're kind of going to ignore, right? And those small peaks or small relative abundance often relate to different isotopes. 
uh, different isotopes of carbon, different isotopes of chlorine. What I can do, I bombard this with electrons, I can cut one of those chlorines off. And what do we know as the mass of chlorine? Yeah, 30, 35.5, right? But we don't have an atom that is 35.5. We've got 35 and we've got 37, right? So we expect that I would have a peak at 35 and I would have a peak at 37. And what do we notice? I have a peak at 35 and I have a peak at 37. Peak at 35, slightly more abundant. So that corresponds, this peak here, corresponds to a chlorine or a charged chlorine atom fragment. If that's 35 or 37, the mass of this total thing is 35 plus 35, 70, uh, 74, 84, 86. What do you notice about 86? Here. 86 is the whole thing charged. Right? So I've got the whole thing charged. And we call this the, um, the parent molecular ion, right? So in a mass spec, the highest peak here, right, is known as the parent molecular ion. What that is useful for, right, is that equates to the molar mass, right? molar mass of my organic compound. Then what will happen is I will have a larger peak here, generally. We call this the base peak. Right? And that just is the most abundant peak. One of the things I want to look out for in this peak here in particular is if it happens to be half the value of my parent molecular ion. If it is half the value, that's a really good indicator that there is symmetry in my molecule. I can't actually cut through a carbon here, so we can see 49 and 84. What's the difference? The difference is 35. That difference corresponds to the chlorine atom. 35 plus 49 gives me <coughs> my 84. Yeah, does that make sense? This is how we interpret a mass spectrum. We probably can but its abundance will be so low, yeah? So we don't see a peak at one, yeah? Parent molecular ion is the whole thing, yeah? Base peak is the most abundant, which is this here, and then we notice I've got one down here, which corresponds to that there. These other peaks, so a one at 51 corresponds to right, a CH2Cl in which this, that chlorine has a mass of 37. Right? This little peak here probably corresponds to a carbon 13 with a chlorine 35 and so on. Yeah? Different opportunities, maybe a hydrogen 2 in there. But we sort of ignore all those tiny peaks, looking for things that are more significant. All right, let's look at another one. Ethanoic acid. Let's break this apart. Ethanoic acid. F means two. Yeah? And means single bond. Oic acid. And I want to consider how many different ways I can cut up this molecule. I can cut there. I can cut 
the CH3 with the O? Huh? And so we, let's consider this. CH3 is 15. If I ever see a 15 peak on a mass spectrum, it's a really good indicator that there's a CH3 somewhere in the molecule. So there we go. There's my CH3. <coughs> Parent molecular ion. That's the whole thing. Whole thing, right? 15 plus 12, right? 27, uh, 27 plus 32, 27, 29, 59, 60. Big peak at 60, parent molecular ion, that's the molar mass of ethanoic acid of 60. I've got a 43, 15, 12 plus, so that there is 15. That there we notice is, uh, what does I say? BH3CO, 15 plus 12, 27 plus 16, 27, 33, 43. Okay, and 15, we'll notice that there is 45. Oh, sorry. Yes, it is. Okay. And if I've got a 43, then I must have a 17 as well. This isn't quite detailed enough, but I would see a small peak here at 17 as well. Because if I'm cutting a peak that's 43, the whole thing's 60. So I must be able to have a 17 to make up the other 60. All right. So that there would appear to be a 17 peak in there, corresponding to that OH. So we can see the most abundant peak is this CH3CO. Yeah. My 15 peak corresponding to a CH3. So, if I see a peak at 45, this is something else to recognise. So, 15, CH3. Peak at 45, really good indicator, carboxylic acid. Yeah? Carboxylic acid fragment. There's no peak at 30, so that's a good indicator. I've got no symmetry in the molecule. Like I said, we don't see one at 17 because it says it's a simplified version. Yeah. I, I have this weird COH peak, and that would be if I break this double bond. No, I would think that's not really something to look out for. Something else to look out for would be, what's, um, what's 15 plus 14? 29. Normally a 29 peak, right? Wouldn't necessarily correspond to this COH, but 29 would correspond to CH3CH2 fragment for, for longer hydrocarbons. Okay, so that's how we look at it. So if we lose COOH, I get my CH3, and there's my 15. If I lose my OH17, I get my um, 43. I can lose one of those hydrogens and I would get 42. Right? So if I cut that there, there is 42. One. So I want to consider that all the different ways in which I can cut my molecule up. Some fragments are going to be more abundant than others. Ignore infrared. Ethanol. Right? Let's have a look at this. Draw ethanol and see if you can identify these characteristic peaks with ethanol. All those different ways in which we can cut that up. Parent molecular ion 46, molar mass of ethanol. Lose a hydrogen, that gives us our 45. 31 plus 15 gives me my 46. 15 is corresponding to my CH3. 31, the remainder of the molecule, CH2OH. 29, CH3, CH2, and we probably see a peak, a mini peak at 17. 
27.